I'd like to call a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order uh, May 11th at 7 o'clock. Please uh, rise and join me. Pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 It's on the agenda the approval of our meeting minutes of May 4th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Are there any additions, deletions? Marty, any comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Aye. So next on the item is referral. Of the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission's uh, 824 recommendations for the athletic fields for the turf field project. Um, so, Rich, yes. you have that. So, you can just make a motion to accept it. Uh, right. The, the letter we got from the Planning and Zoning. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, uh, referral for the uh, athletic fields and turf field project from the planning and zoning as submitted. Uh, I'll, I'll read it into the minutes. No, I'm just, I'm just reading. Yeah. Yeah. I'll read it into the minutes. After meeting on May 10th, uh, 2022, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to send a favorable report to the Board of Selectmen for approval of the turf field and associated amenities, including light fixtures, Reunion activities on the property located at 300 Whittlesey Drive, uh, Assessor's Map 19, Block 63, Lot 80, owned by the Town of Bethel. The Commission concluded that the proposed use of the property for enhancement recreational purpose will provide an opportunity for the Educational Park to offer many recreational opportunities for the children of Bethel. I'll second for discussion. Discussion? Well, I just want to see the plans. We're going to vote on it. I mean, he's got a set of plans. Yeah. Let us look at them. That's all. Where would be the uh, best place? To... Uh, just right here, right where you are. See that right there. Okay. Um, so, real quick overview of the project as discussed in the uh, approval of the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Board. First of all, Mike is lost here with Claris Construction. I apologize. Um, Basically what we're doing is we're taking the existing athletic fields that are between the high school and middle school, a uh, little under 200 and 180,000 square feet of turf, uh, natural grass currently, what we're planning on doing is converting it to artificial turf um, and, 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 and creating uh, areas for both baseball, softball, lacrosse, uh, soccer, and field hockey. Um, what the additional square footage of uh, playable surface does uh, by shifting this baseball field back into the hill and flopping the softball field from its current location to the other side here to the from from west to east um, is we were able to get a full regulation soccer lacrosse and field hockey field and then in the outfield of the baseball field we're able to get a full regulation of uh, lacrosse field. Also, will be part of the plan is these white tick marks that are really hard to see on the camera. But you can see them here, are tick marks for uh, where you can come and paint them for a practice football field. So it's going to uh, offer uh, just a variety of sports, multiple games going on at once. We're going to have two scoreboards, one facing this field that's multi-purpose, one facing the baseball field that's multi-purpose, and then we're also going to have a 500 seat. I'll put it on this plan here. 500 feet bleacher system set into the hill between the upper field and the lower field with a press box. Um, there will be ADA access, access via a ramp on the lower portion here. Um, we'll be repaving the path coming from the middle school to the high school. And then we are putting in provisions for uh, athletic lighting. Uh, so the donor of the pro uh, project has agreed to put all the conduit and pole bases necessary uh, while we're digging up and, and the whole area is under construction. Um, so that at a later date, the town of Bethel can come and put in a lighting picture. So there'll be 11 light poles that can run uh, in the future. They'll be able to uh, play only, only on the softball field if they want to. They'll be able to light just the, the uh, soccer uh, field if they want to. They'll be able to light just 
the baseball field if they want to. They'll be able to light just the secondary lacrosse field if they want to, or the whole thing can be on. Um, so in a nutshell, that's the project. Uh, we're looking to do this um, starting hopefully the end of this month and, and, and through the summer and into the beginning part of the school year. Uh, what you see here is our construction logistics map that we've already reviewed with the uh, members of the Board of Ed, uh, the principals of both the high school and middle school, park and rec, and the athletic department. Uh, we'll be taking this whole area um, that will be fenced, we'll maintain the fence up by the football field. Uh, we'll be putting temporary fencing around the field for construction safety. Um, and we'll, most of our truck access will be down here at the north uh, east corner of uh, the, the bus loop of, of the middle school. There is a short amount of time in the summer that we will need uh, part of the up of the lower uh, parking lot of the high school. Uh, that will also be fenced in at that time, but that is just for material staging as we uh, improve the site. So in a nutshell, that's the project. Is there any concession stand or anything? There is no concession stand. All right, so they have to use the one up above. Yes. What's the length and the width of the project? What does it encompass? Uh, it's 202,000 square feet, uh, which is the equivalent of over two football fields. Um, I don't know. You know. It's kind of an odd shape here. Uh, but, you know, we have the regulation uh, soccer field. Plus, we've got about 15 feet on this side, 20 feet this side. And then you've got that triangular piece. And we've got pretty much that whole other setup here in addition to the baseball field. And this is just going to be a practice field for the football team. First football still we played. Uh, correct. Un unfortunately, we're, we're about 10 yards short of having a full regulation football field. To do that, we would have to be coming here building costly retaining walls down this way, down that hill. Um, it just won't work. However, this will give uh, for varsity sports will still be played at, at uh, the varsity baseball and softball field. But and this will still be used for middle school and practice. But it does, as you know, our fields get wet. They can't play on them, so they, at, at, as a substitute, they will be able to play varsity games. It will be varsity regulations for all sports. And the other nice thing about it is netting between those two fields. Yes. So you can separate. Right. We, we have multiple games going on um, all at the same time, which is going to be outstanding for, you know, not only the high school, but you know, middle school and whoever else participates. Right. And just like the football field lines can be painted on temporarily, you can come in. <laughs> Youth soccer does a big uh, Columbus tournament. They come on the, uh, the youth soccer field with a, uh, uh, a washable paint. Once it rains, it, it wears off. And it's regulation. It is regulation play for certain sports. Every varsity sport, there's there's regulation for soccer, lacrosse, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, field hockey, uh, regulation baseball, regulation softball. Just for the record, Terry, your name is. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry Nelson, Director of Fiscal Services. Thank you. And Chris, you too for that. Chris Joy, your, your comments. Okay. It's, good. It's, it's a great gift that looks good. to the town. You know, it's, it's going to make a, you know, multiple use pretty much year round. Uh, I don't know what you will be snow able to time, but. And not only that, a Parks and Rec has talked about, you know, after hours, after school hours, during the summer, when the when the, when the schools aren't using it, they'll be able to uh, have men's league uh, flag football there or, you know, women's league softball. There's so many other uses that can generate actually revenue to the town. Does that have, is that uh, sprinkler? There's no uh, need for irrigation no, at all. Okay. It's, a, it's a very low maintenance field. Um, there, there's new drainage that's going to come in here. Uh, basically, what we do is we build up about uh, 12 inches of gravel. Then there's a six inch curb around the entire field. The turf ties into that. Basically, you're creating a giant bathtub that can hold something crazy like 40 inches of water uh, at a time as fast as we can get it out of there. We're tying into the existing drainage system. It creates a healthier actually drainage product coming out than natural grass would because natural grass sheet flows off. It collects grass clippings, dirt, uh, pesticides, herbicides. This just is filters right down the, the gravel actually acts as a giant filter. Does it go to daily? It right does. It do, once it, it holds a certain amount, just like any sort of stormwater retention okay. system would, and then it daylights out here and it daylights out down here. Uh, it connects to pipes that then daylight. They don't daylight right there. And what's the turf made out of? It's a field turf. It's the product that we're using. Um, and it's a synthetic grass. Uh, it's about the same height as natural turf. 
and then it's infilled with a uh, black crumb hover. So like we like recycle tires. Recycle tires. So it's a very, again, um, eco-friendly from that standpoint um, product. And, and you say it's eco-friendly, it's been tested, it, there's no problems with it or anything like that? Uh, no, that's a great question. Uh, one that's come up a lot with the project. Uh, there's the health department in town has all the studies that have been done, not only nationally, but globally uh, for this type of product. Uh, the state of Connecticut Health Department has, and, and all the surrounding states have issued uh, letters of, rec, you know, that, that, that they don't see a need to not use this product. They can never say anything is 100% safe, um, but um, it, it is a product that's widely used. They, there have been alternatives that other um, municipalities and other organizations have moved back to just the regular crumb rubber. It's the most tested product there is for this application. All right, good, thank you. And what, what's the lifespan on this roughly? Um, properly maintained, 12 to 15 years. Um, and it, 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 you'll, you, with the project comes two apparatuses that get put behind a tractor or like a gator. You'll, you'll want to do that every so often, less, than, less frequently than you, you would cut the grass. Um, and then once a year, they recommend bringing in, hiring a professional to come in and, and rake it out with a larger machine that really gets the aggregate up and, and resets it. So those numbers and figures have been given um, in the past in Park and Rec, so they can add those to their fiscal budget. Thank you. Thank you. Marty, you have any questions or? Ooh, I'm walking away. Uh, I can... I... Sorry, Marty, go ahead. That's all right. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any questions. I've seen the the document uh, that Peter sent over and uh, I, I don't have a problem. Okay, thank you. Peter, you have a comment? Uh, yes, this is Peter Olson. I've been acting as special town attorney for this transaction. Um, just to take you through what's happening, the donor has set up a special purpose entity and the town will be entering into a lease with that entity um, to essentially last the duration of the construction period. Um, they will complete the construction, pay all the bills, and then the lease will terminate and the town will be the owner of the, of the improvements. Um, the statutes require that when we do a lease of town property, we have a public hearing. So I think that's the action for the Board of Selectmen tonight is to schedule the public hearing, um, as well as a special meeting for you to vote once the public hearing is, is concluded. Thank you. Oh. Did we vote on that? No, <laughs> that was just on the referral. Um, we didn't vote on the referral yet. No, that's what, yeah. Do you have any other questions on the All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries? Uh, uh, I'm for on the generous consideration of the date, time for a public hearing. I'd like to make a motion that we have a public hearing on um, the field project uh, May 26, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in the meeting room A, the Clifford J. Municipal Center, One School Street. Second. Does that give you guys enough time to, you said you had to start so. Uh Yeah, I mean, ideally, that's what we that's have to the do. Best well, we that's the best thing because we've got to have the time frame for the That's the best we can do. We got to publish. We're going to. Oh, 15 days or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the date. Yeah. So that's what. No, well, that's, that's what we're going to work with. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, we can't catch the